Hello everyone, my name is Tomasz and today I was asked to just show you a few features and uh, entire product regarding to our futures market, so the stuff that we are working right now. Uh, the talk will be in English, so if there will be any questions in the end, uh, you can ask them in Polish, I try to translate. Uh, the talk is in English because we would like to make a recording out of it and show it to the bigger audience, so that's the main reason here. Uh, the talk is basically uh, quite short, I have only a few slides. Uh, the quality of them is, uh, <laughs> I apologize for it, it's, it's quite low because my uh, graphic skills are quite low. <laughs> so, uh, but basically you will see. Uh, okay. So, uh, let's start. Uh, somebody, some of you probably heard that we are working on the futures market and yet another DEX and other why, 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 why we actually need uh, another futures market. And this is basically the main topic of this presentation. So uh, the slide that you see already is uh, actually stolen from one of the previous presentations. It, the presentation, presentation was like uh, one or two years ago. I wanted to keep it here because uh, it's quite crucial for me, uh, especially that the, to show you that the main assumptions regarding this project stay the same. So we still would like to provide for the community the tools that allow you to uh, trade directly between people without the middle parts and also to trade on the markets that are not strictly common. So there are not futures, not uh, crypto markets, not, uh, not stuff that is already present, uh, present f in, in other products that you have on the market right now. Uh, yeah, and uh, in order to show you some uh, technicals why we actually would like to create another decentralized uh, futures market, uh, I would like to show you uh, some stuff related to the liquidity. Uh, and here we will just compare uh, two uh, approaches, how we can think about the liquidity. Uh, so if we have the exchange, it can be decentralized exchange, uh, centralized exchange, it actually doesn't matter. But when we have two uh, parties, like two traders who wants to trade some commodity, some, some index, uh, some uh, currency, whatever, so they would like to trade uh, some futures contracts. They have to find some exchange that's providing this for them. And this exchange is like the middle party here, yeah? Like, they cannot trade between them. They have to trade with the exchange. And the exchange gives us the warranty about the margin of the other participants. So, as far as you know, the uh, trading on the futures markets is strictly based on the trading on the margin. So. We are not trading with the entire uh, money that we, that, we, that we trade, but we only put small portion of it, like 10% of the notional value of the contract that we trade be, uh, under the hood. And here we have some simple <laughs> visualization of it, like both traders, let's say they are trading some commodity, they put their cash as the margin deposit and exchange is providing warranty here. But the, trick is, the tricky part uh, starts when one of the parties has not enough funds. Let's say green one is in long position and red one is in short. If the price goes up and, and it, it will change dramatically, then the person that is in short may receive um, something called margin call. Yeah? So it needs to provide additional funds. And if this person is not uh, able to provide these funds, then it's liquidated by somebody else. Yeah, right. So we are looking for the order book and looking for some other party that is there. But if the order book is not fluent, then the exchange has some issue, yeah? because uh, who has to pay for the debt that this person created? And in order to protect against such cases, there are few, let's say, methods that are quite common. First of them is uh, related to the liquidity providers. So liquidity providers are mostly uh, funds or big whales that provide liquidity. So they create orders in the order book. There are quite big orders, so there is almost always warranty that we will find somebody that can be uh, used to liquidate other person that has not enough funds. But there is, of course, some probability that there will be no such person. If, if you have some market that is not quite common, uh, then is the other option that is called insurance funds. And insurance funds are the institutions that uh, <laughs> that. that uh, actually put the money on the table in case that there is no sufficient uh, liquidity. 
And if we think about uh, giving users the option to create their own markets or trade markets that are not quite common, then the liquidity is the main issue here because how we can provide liquidity for, let's say, some ab some abstract market like Bitcoin, uh, like uh, the Big Mac market, like uh, corn market, some something like abstraction. So. I made some infographic here, <laughs> sorry for my paint skills, but I would like to uh, visualize the blockchain network itself because our solution is strictly based on the blockchain here. So we have distributed network of the nodes that are communicating with each other. I put a whale here in the middle just to, to uh, show that it's, uh, is, is the blockchain here with, um, uh, with our staff. And these nodes are running the distributed order book and this order book takes orders from the same parties that we had before, but this order book allows them to create the transaction directly, directly between those, those uh, counterparties. And this approach actually is drastically changing the liquidity here, because if we analyze it, then the liquidity is not necessarily needed in our solution, because what happens if the counterparty has not enough funds well, in, in particular case, other parties are not affected. We are not participating in those transactions. We are just securing them, but we are not the party that gives you warranty that the other side exists and has enough funds. Here you have the counterparty. You can see it. You can check its funds. It's visible. But in case that this other party has not, not enough funds, it can be liquidated on the same rules as it was on the standard exchange. But in case the order book will be not fluent or there will be not enough illiquidity there, uh, the site or the party that is in profit can just cancel this, this uh, contract and remove it. And give, it, it actually gives us huge opportunity uh, to create our own markets without the liquidity providers at all. Yeah? And I wanted to visualize it in the way, maybe you recognize this person, it's actually Louis Anderson. And Louis Anderson had once a snowball uh, manufacturer, let's say. So he was a supplier of the snowballs for the other kids that had a snow battle in the meantime. Uh, so if we, uh, I, I think, I mean, like our, our approach uh, would be the dream comes true when uh, we would be like the Louis. So we would like to create a tool that is available for other users, but we will be strictly not participating in the creation of the markets, providing the liquidity, being an oracle of these assets. We would like to create a tools, be a provider, but not strictly the coordinator of this entire thing. We, let's say for now it's Louis Anderson lemma, but we will return to it uh, a bit later. So uh, what's actually the notion of the market? So from our perspective, it can be absolutely anything. Here we have some standardized uh, crude oil futures market with uh, 10,000 barrels of oil. So each contract actually uh, represents 10,000 10, barrels, uh, 1,000 barrels of, of crude oil. Uh, the initial deposit is the amount of cash that you need to pay in order to enter the position. In particular cases, 10% of the value of the position. And the maintenance margin is the amount of the margin that will cause you, uh, that will cause the liquidation of your positions. Uh, tick size is basically the smallest tick size, so the smallest amount of money that is changing the price here. Uh, if you think about the order book here, we are using the standardized order book that, that <laughs> you can see here, just some prices here. Uh, crude oil is uh, more or less like $77 right now, so we collect the, the orders from the people. We also track the recent positions, and if we consider some uh, example here, uh, our system is uh, distributed, it's, which indicates that this order book is not stored in one location, but it's stored on each of those nodes. Each node actually is running a copy of it, and they are uh, reaching a consensus around what's at the current state of this book. And who actually is tracking this uh, position, who actually is uh, taking orders from this book and creating positions of them. So uh, for me, uh, as you can see here, we have few orders in the order book, but our system is not responsible for searching of such orders and uh, creating positions out of them. We have uh, separated this functionality uh, to 
other parties. Actually, the notion who is behind these robots, let's say, who are searching for this position, uh, is quite generic because it can be absolutely anything. It can be some person that is manually typing these orders uh, into positions, or it can be some uh, bots, some script, uh, some AI. It doesn't matter for us as long as those positions are uh, sensible and can be used uh, by, by the chain. And here uh, we can think like these bots are uh, in some kind of competition, so they are trying to uh, find the best matches from the order book and create positions, but only those of them will be successful that create the best value valuable positions. So uh, I will not provide right now the equation that determines which position is better than the other, but you might think like about about it like on the uh, Bitcoin network itself when the miners are mining the next blocks. Here we have a community of the providers or bots that are searching for the positions. And if we think about the order book itself, for me order book is, uh, let's say, based from the two main components. One is the bidirectional sorted list of the orders, like we have on the left hand side. And on the other side is the matching engine. So there is a software that is constantly uh, searching through this book and looking for some positions or trades that can be can be combined. For us, it's actually not strictly order book because we separated the magic engine. So those robots are actually the matching engines. And we can think about our order book as the marketplace strictly because what people are doing here. People are basically just sending some offers of what price they are interested in buying or selling some, some stuff. But we are not responsible for, for searching or, uh, and matching these positions together. So here's some example basically of the matching. Uh, I actually skipped here, but it's quite important. We also don't provide the warranty regarding the price. As you can see here, Alice and Bob uh, have been combined in position for 77.03, but it's not the best price from the order book. There is actually some better offer for 7711, as you can see, because the matching is strictly based uh, in model similar to the Dutch auction. So we accept the first offer that accepts criteria of both sides. It doesn't matter if there are better offers on the market, we are taking the offer that is already on the table. So out of those contracts, we can see that out of those orders, there can be created some, some positions. And, oh, sorry, one, one too much. And this order book is filled. Now, if we think about the, uh, again, about the market itself, as I mentioned in the beginning, it would be great to have many such markets and if this notion of the market would be in not in our responsibility because uh, we, we cannot speak about the decentralized solution that is control, controlled by the single authority here. And in order to make it more decentralized, we thought like, okay, we have uh, partially solved the problem of the liquidity from our perspective. So system stays stable uh, in case that there is not li enough liquidity in s on some market. Uh, we have distributed it, so there is no central party that is controlling uh, the, the system itself. So if we will be the authority that is creating markets, it will be uh, some bottleneck here. That's why we created some concept related to the decentralized, decentralized uh, autonomous, or, uh, the autonomous organization uh, in short DAO that you are mostly familiar with. So if we hypothetically take a case like uh, any person which stakes some, let's say, 100 USDC is able to put for voting uh, some proposition of the market. So there can be parallel uh, tracks, let's say, on which people are able to vote which markets they would like to have. So the community will be able basically to decide which of those markets will be in the end deployed and traded. And it's uh, quite crucial because those markets can be absolutely about anything. Here I put as example the corn market. Actually the corn is right now quite hot topic on the border with the Ukraine that we have, but let's say we have some corn market that expires in the first quarter of 2024. And if somebody proposes it and it feels or it fits in the uh, like uh, it fits into uh, expectations of the community, 
they can use the funds, or in particular case, the stables is so USDC to vote for this uh, market. So if enough votes will be collected, let's say in two weeks, then this market will be automatically deployed on the decentralized network and the Oracle providers will automatically try to attach to this market and provide the best price that is in their opinion uh, related to this commodity. Uh, here are, I, I, I've put a uh, few other markets as examples. So in the decision right now, we may have oil market and all of them can be in parallel actually. And uh, once this market is deployed, like in the green section in the end, uh, it's open until the moment is that is specified inside the, this, the, this, uh, this market. So it will be automatically closed in the end. People can then close the positions and just transfer the funds between the, between the, uh, the parties depending on the uh, Oracle price that is settled in the end. So uh, those are the main features that I wanted to show you. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask now. Uh, if you want me to return to something, then also please tell me. <laughs> Thanks.